That's the other one. Okay. Okay, Hassan presented to you beautifully, uh, but uh, I just uh, confirmed that that uh, epiretinal membrane, if recurs, uh, it cannot cross the boundary between ILM peeled and ILM unpeeled area. This was already presented by Fogg uh, several years ago. And another example confirming that is re rep proliferation of epiretinal membrane. Uh, and this reproliferation didn't appear in this triangle piece of ILM peeled area. Everywhere else you see recurrence of epiretinal membrane in this specific case. This is important uh, for our, uh, for our, for, for this talk. How it, no, how can I move it to the next? It don't want, Okay. Uh, if we talk about lamella macula hole and pseudo holes, uh, we have to uh, remember first definition by gas. And the gas defined pseudo macula holes as spontaneous contraction of epiretinal membrane that surrounds but does not cover the foveal area. And this qualified that as vitro retinal interface disease. Uh, and in a lamella macula holes, uh, was defined as spontaneous rupture of inner wall of large uh, central cystoid space. Uh, and this was qualified as retinal capillary disease. Then uh, we received uh, some description with first OCT by Kaochina in 2004 and others. Uh, but if you go back to original gas drawing, you see also uh, epiretinal membrane to be present both in case of lamella macula hole and macula pseudo hole. Then we received an international vitreo macular traction study group classification, and actually uh, they presented that both diseases are round or oval, well circumscribed reddish lesion, or, uh, or it is um, also almost the same. Uh, discrete reddish round or oval lesion in the fovea, uh, and the difference was only made on uh, OCT base. Then we learned uh, that we may have lamella macula hole epiretinal proliferation, LHEP, which may grow over time uh, or change its appearance. Uh, for me, interest with lamella macula hole began with, in 2006, uh, when I had a patient, uh, it was uh, our first uh, spectral domain OCT. On one eye, it was classic epiretinal membrane. Uh, on another eye was lamella macula hole. Uh, it was for me very strange to have two diseases in the same eye. Uh, then we wrote a lot of papers on that topic and probably uh, I will try to sum up what we found. Here you see our first uh, uh, our first paper, we found that epiretinal membrane is present in all cases. By the case, in this case, you have on the left side classical epiretinal membrane, and here you see LHEP. Uh, we found, uh, looking on central B scans, that we may have pseudo hole with lamellar defects, macular pseudo hole, paralamella macula hole, and lamella macula holes. Uh, but we found that uh, in many of the eyes, at least two subtypes are present at different uh, B scans. Here you see uh, pseudo hole and lamella hole, same day examination, same arm, one millimeter apart. So do we have two diseases, uh, one millimeter apart? Uh, we produced a model of the lesion and found that it is amorphous lesion, and the difference is uh, only where is the B scan taken. Does not want. How can I move? Uh, it moves. This is very strange with this. How can I move next? Oh, okay. Uh, we, we looked in follow-up uh, several eyes, 
Uh, and we found that uh, they change their appearance during the uh, time course. Uh, and here you see spectralis uh, examination of macular pseudo hole, which changed its appearance into lamella macula hole over five months follow up. Uh, and uh, do one disease interface diseases moves to uh, moves to uh, retina capillary disease? It is for me not possible. Here you see it better on this animation. So we decided to uh, to think that this. It always don't want to. Okay. So we decided to. Uh, to think about this disease, that it is just epiretinal membrane. Uh, and I want to go back a little bit and decided to do surgery only uh, as, as we were doing uh, surgery for epiretinal membrane. Here you see after staining, uh, it is uh, visible that epiretinal membrane and ILM is absent in the center of the fovea, around the center of the fovea. And if we try to remove uh, the epiretinal membrane uh, and ILM together, we see a hole here in the, member, uh, in the membrane. Additionally, in next video, ah, it, it always don't want to move when I'm I have full screen videos. Okay. Now, this is the uh, last, and now how to do my next. It must be, I was told it must be outside, but it is not possible to be outside. Okay, okay. It probably will go. No, it is still the same video. Okay, this is the next one, okay. And here you see once again a picture taken from this video uh, and, uh, and uh, original video, and you see also a hole in the center of the membrane which confirms that there is no ILM uh, and no epiretinal membrane in the center of the fovea. Uh, so this led us uh, to suggestion that the lamella macular hole is caused by traction uh, of uh, vitreous and some small piece of ILM is taken out and this induces uh, uh, epiretinal membrane formation uh, and creates the picture of pseudomacular hole and lamella macular hole and in my opinion this is the only one disease. So, was the right gas, I don't want to move to next slides in all these cases. Okay. Okay, but we also have uh, some secondary cases because do, if we ask question, was gas wrong uh, with his classification? Probably not because we also have cases when we present that uh, cyst erupted uh, and caused lamella macula hole secondary to other diseases as diabetic retinopathy or age-related macular degeneration. So uh, my suggestion and what we uh, strongly uh, feel and present in our papers is that idiopathic epiretinal membrane may have classical appearance or lamella macula hole pseudo hole, but we have also secondary lamella holes which are caused by vascular diseases as Gas previously described uh, in his papers many years ago before OCT era. So in conclusions, non-full thickness macula holes, lamella macula hole, macula pseudo hole, should be considered as a subtype of epiretinal membrane formation and retinal capillary disease may lead to secondary lamella macula hole. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm sorry for these uh, problems with computer. So you say that uh, um, 
La Mellon Macular Hall is a subtype of a peritoneal membrane, but there are a few articles uh, about the Mellon Macular Hall, recent article, right by, wrote by um, Pang, Schumann, Govet, that demonstrated that uh, La Mellon Macular Hall, there is an evolution during the lifetime of patients uh, with a uh, decrease of the residual foveal thickness inside, into the macular hole, and um, an increase of the um, splitting of intraretinal split, uh, of uh, intraretinal, uh, uh, an increase of intraretinal splitting. And uh, what do you think about this? Because if you consider lamellar macular hole as a epiretinal member, you uh, declared that the lamellar macular hole is a stable condition. In this case, no. in this article, no. No, it is not a stable condition. I thought that I have still my slides here, but I cited those papers uh, in my presentation initially. Uh, it may, you see, traction is a dynamic process. Okay. Uh, and uh, if uh, and traction produced by epiretinal membrane may change appearance of the uh, retina tissue. And in case of a classical form of epiretinal membrane, it changes uh, uh, the structure of, uh, of retina itself. It makes such waves or, or different appearances which, which were presented by us or by others. But in case of central defects in ILM, it may, uh, it may produce traction to all the layers and they may, or if, you, if, I, if I show you, uh, this is the, the problem with videos which are, which are full screen. Okay, I cannot okay, show you. Uh, when you have a uh, lamellar macular hole with uh, a typical epiretinal membrane, if I remember well, Schumann um, described epiretinal proliferation lamellar macular hole, which is your surgical way. Do you prefer to remove completely epiretinal membrane and ILM, or do you perform uh, inverted flap? No, I never perform inverted flap. For me, is, it is just epiretinal membrane. Uh, and I, uh, I, and I know the papers uh, that it is a risk of iatrogenic uh, macular hole formation during surgery with LHEP. But in my feeling, we do all since mo about 10 years only epiretinal membrane removal and ILM removal. You must be, do your job very carefully in the center of the fovea. Uh, and then you do not produce uh, uh, macula hole.